In this video, I'm going to introduce a few miscellaneous concepts that will get us started with a unit I'm going to call functional neuroanatomy. And I'm going to approach neuroanatomy in two directions. One I'll call functional, one I'll call structural. And I hope the reason for that will become clear as we go on. First is the term syndromes. Patterns of functional abnormalities are called syndromes and knowledge of neuroanatomy helps clinicians diagnose the cause of neurological syndromes because different disorders tend to affect different areas of the nervous system. Neural functions often involve neuronal connections that cross multiple neural structures, and neural structures often contain neuronal connections that are involved in multiple neural functions. Here's a couple of illustrations for that idea. So here, let's imagine a part of the nervous system that's divided into three parts, structures one, two, and three that are named structures of the nervous system, and a pathway in the nervous system, just represented by one axon here, that carries information related to a function. We'll just call function one. So this pathway carrying information for function one passes through all three structures, structure one, structure two, and structure three. So if a patient complained of a symptom related to this function, suggesting dysfunction in this pathway, there could be a lesion of this pathway in any of these three structures, and you would need more information to know where along this pathway or which structure is affected by the lesion. And to look at it from the other perspective, here let's focus in on one of the structures, so let's say structure two in the middle, and we have that same pathway carrying information for function one, but now there's also gonna be additional pathways carrying information for other functions. So here would be a pathway we'll call function carrying information for function two, and another pathway we'll call carrying information for function three. And all three of those pathways pass through structure two. So you can imagine if there was a lesion of structure two, it could potentially affect all three of these pathways and could potentially affect three different functions of the nervous system. And then a patient might complain of three different kinds of symptoms that could really help you pinpoint the location of a, of a lesion in the nervous system. So in this unit that I'm calling functional neuroanatomy, we'll discuss neural functions that are commonly involved in neurological syndromes. For each function, I will describe its pathway through the nervous system and the syndromes that may occur with abnormalities at different points along the pathway. The next unit will discuss common neuroanatomical syndromes in more detail and walk through how multiple functions may be affected by lesions, which are areas of abnormality, in commonly affected neural structures. Confusingly, there are often multiple terms used for the same neural structures or functions. I will usually use only one for brevity, but I'll try to mention common synonyms when the terms first arise. Another common point of confusion that I want to mention here is failure to distinguish between the concepts of severity versus distribution of functional abnormalities. Because partial lesions are actually more common than complete lesions of most neural pathways. For example, there could be a lesion that causes the loss of touch sensation of the skin of one entire leg. So let's say this is a pathway carrying that information for touch sensation for one entire leg through the nervous system. And then if we zoom in on this area here, let's imagine two lesions. One would be a complete lesion where all the axons in that pathway have been disrupted. And the second would be a partial lesion. Here, let's take an example that half of the axons of the pathway have been disrupted. And of course, there wouldn't just be two axons in a pathway, there'd be many, many axons. But just to illustrate the point, let's compare a complete lesion with a lesion of half the axons in a pathway. In the case of lesion one, the complete lesion, there would be a total loss of touch sensation of the entire leg. In the case of lesion two, the partial lesion, there would be a partial loss of touch sensation of the entire leg. And if it was about half the number of axons in the pathway, it would be about a 50% loss of touch sensation for that leg. But with both these lesions, the entire leg would be affected. So the distribution or the area that's affected would be the same, even though the severity would be very different. A complete lesion would cause a much more severe loss of that function than a partial lesion would because the axons unaffected by the partial lesion would still be able to transmit this amount of information. 